Welcome to the Meet Dave podcast. Today is going to be a fun one. Uh, if you are in the San Diego area, I am going to be in Escondido this weekend, May 12th and 13th, co-headlining the Grand Comedy Club with the very funny Alfred Robles. It's going to be a blast. Come on out. Go to my website, DaveWilliamsonComedy.com to check all my tour dates. I've got Boise on the calendar. i got Grand Rapids. Uh, me and Forrest, my podcast partner on the Merman podcast, are coming down to Florida in September. Lots of dates coming up. Please come out and see me on the road. You can buy... The Dave Williamson comedy, Meet Dave, all-purpose rub and seasoning. I don't know why I called it that. It's just the Meet Dave, <laughs> all-purpose seasoning and rub. Uh, but that's on the website as well. Got a new label coming, uh, and that shipment should be in any day now. So, uh, But more importantly, I hope you enjoy this episode. Uh, very nice dude, very cool guy. Puts out great videos. I met him at Rec Tech headquarters when he was doing an academy there. And I think you're going to really enjoy him. He's at Texas, which is just TX. Uh, brew and barbecue on Instagram. Please meet Ty Cheryl. Ty, thanks for joining me, dude. Uh, we, we, I thought I thought we lost you for a second. Are you doing okay, health wise? Uh, I, I looked up and you were <laughs> posting uh, posts from the from your hospital bed. I mean, the content has to keep rolling, no matter what. You have to keep posting content. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it was uh, it was a treat. Um, uh, the appendix ruptured and had to get that sucker out of there, man. It was, it was pretty, pretty painful. Were My you- wife's a nurse. So she, she told me, she was like, you got to get your butt to the hospital. <laughs> so were, were you, were you off cooking somewhere or doing something or, or were you just home or no, man, what had happened was, um, that weekend we flew out Friday. Uh, yeah, we flew out Friday. And we went to Memphis to go see uh, Shinedown. So oh, Shinedown yeah. was playing in Memphis. We flew out there. And it, it, that weekend started bad. Our first flight was canceled, so we were already like, all right, cool. But anyway, we made it out there. Everything was great. Of course, the show is completely badass, like they all are. Spent the whole next day at Graceland doing whatever. And then Sunday, I woke up with this, this bad pain, and I had the chills. First thought came to mind was, did I get COVID? <laughs> that was the first <laughs> thing that came to mind, except for that excruciating pain. And then um, that was the day we were leaving. So we started leaving. I almost passed out at the airport in the security line. And uh, Christy comes over there. She's like, you are gray. I was like, I have to go to a hospital. <laughs> and she goes, well, hold on a second. How bad is the pain? Because we are in Memphis. <laughs> and when she told me that, I was like, it's an hour flight. I can make it. <laughs> so I ended up getting on the plane, passed out on the plane. We landed, got in the car and drove straight to the ER and they admitted me. Man, dude. But yeah, it was, it was fun. So, you know, uh, Zach Myers, the guitarist from Shinedown is a big barbecue head. Oh yeah. Yeah. We talk a lot on Instagram about food and all kinds of stuff, man. Yeah. He's my buddy. He's a good he's, guy. He, They're he, all good guys. He's been on this podcast before and they've had us to hang out backstage and stuff. And Zach likes to bring his smoker and cook for the band. And we stayed at his house one time actually, and he had to go out on tour. And so he's texting while we're there hanging out, you know, cause we needed a place just to chill for a day while we were out on tour. We happened to be going through Memphis yeah. and he was like, yo, I got a bunch of Wagyu steaks in the, uh, in the freezer, help yourself. And we were like, don't mind if we do. <laughs> so we were cooking up this piece. <laughs> I mean, we, we were eating. It was like the Odyssey where we were just like, he was off, you know, fighting a war somewhere. We were just at his house, just eating his feast. <laughs> right in his fridge. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Playing his guitars. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't, we didn't touch his guitars, but we did go through his sneaker collection pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty thoroughly. Well, you I'm, know, I think that's the, that's the main thing him and I go back and forth about is our, is about shoes. Cause I'll get a pair of shoes and I'll post a picture. And he's like, got them. It's like, I, I know you have them. <laughs> <laughs> he's got them all dude. Got them. He's got every one of them. Yeah. Well, I'm but glad you I survived. We go back and forth about shoes. I saw, I liked your post uh, when you posted the menu that they had for you while you were in the hospital and it was just jello and, and, and uh, terrible stuff. And you were like, where's the brisket? I literally thought it was a joke. I, I opened the door. I wheeled my little IV thing out there and I opened the door and I showed the, cause I was right across in the nurse's station. And I said, is this for real? <laughs> and they were like, yeah. I was like, I can't eat anything like that. Whatever's on the menu is what he can eat. And that it was good and bad. I lost like eight pounds that week 
because I, I mean, I went three days with liquid, but uh, that was the plus. But on the other hand, I was like, dang, I, I need some meat. Yeah. So you think they could put some, uh, some, uh, 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 uh <laughs> some, uh, brisket fat in, <laughs> in your jello at least, or something like that. A little smoke something. flavor on there. Like, give <laughs> me, <laughs> give little, me, put some liquid smoke in it or it's something. Yeah. A little, little tallow <laughs> jello. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That would have worked. I would have ate it. Any plans to go back? Uh, this episode will come out next week. So, uh, that means that it's only a week out from Memphis in May. You thinking about going back to Memphis at all for Memphis in May this year? I, you know, I've never been to a competition and the first time I had anything to do with any kind of barbecue competition is whenever, um, I went to rec tech Academy and I was, you know, I always say I'm, I'm really green in barbecue. I'm learning as I go. I learn from people like you that post stuff and other people that are posting stuff. That's how I learn. And I'm strictly a backyard guy. So when they had me out at rec tech Academy, and they had me uh, doing some demos. I went over to Jody and Greg and I was like, I don't do competitions. Like I am in over my head already, but that was my first taste in a competition type atmosphere of teaching that. And we were doing the, the class for Shiner and it was like the head brewmaster of Shiner. And he was like on my team. So I had my team around the table. And I looked at him. I was like, guys, I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm flying by the seat of my pants. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Hey, that's when uh, you and Bert came right before that academy. Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually where, where I met you guys. That's where I met you. You were at Rec Tech uh, yeah. doing some stuff with them with the academy and everything. And uh, me and Bert yeah, came, came like, through there like uh, bulls in a china shop, no pun intended. And um, and uh, you and a bunch of people were there uh, doing real professional stuff. And we just came through guzzling down booze and and taking credit for a delicious whole hog that they cooked <laughs> <laughs> that was a good time but yeah i told him i was like i have no idea what i'm doing guys and we're gonna we're gonna learn together there you go but it was it was a lot of fun so you know i taught backyard style of what i do and you know that's kind of how we did that but as for the memphis and may i want to go just because i've never been and i heard it's just an experience so i'm gonna try to get out there um because that's that's thank you right around the corner yeah it's a couple weeks so I, I, when this comes out it's a week i'm thinking about going uh i think i've secured a place to stay if i do go and i've been once i went during my barbecue tour a few years ago and uh that was kind of it was i think it was the first one back after the pandemic so it was a little bit different but i had a blast i did a show in one of the guys tents uh because you know the thursday night's just parties basically and yeah. everyone was like, that's a horrible idea. No one's going to be able to hear comedy during Memphis and May. It's just, there's chaos everywhere. And it ended up being awesome. Everyone in that tent was listening to me. And then the people in the party next was uh, next to us were like, what's going on over there? And they start looking over the fence. And then these people start looking over the fence. And then the people walking by me on the river stopped. Or, and I had just people listening. And so I was only supposed to do like 30 minutes. And I ended up doing like 45 or an hour or something just because everyone was having fun. So I want to go back even though I don't have anything planned and uh, and see if I can just do like uh, pop-ups, just see if people will let me just pop up in their tent and do 30 minutes just like sneak of comedy. Tent. I'll do it for tips, <laughs> right? Just throw me a couple bucks to, so I can write the weekend off his work and, um, and just have fun going around. Like, you know, cause if you want to learn from people, that is the spot, dude. Everybody is there. Everyone's got their setup and doing their, you know, their version of stuff. And, everyone's looking to hang out and mingle and talk and party. Uh, it, it, it's a great time. I, it is like Disneyland for a dude like me and you, man. Um, and I, yeah, we're really, we're really thinking about going. Yeah. Well, let me know if you you're do, talking we'll, me into it now. Yeah, we'll, co we'll coordinate. <laughs> I'm at you there. Um, so you mentioned you went to the rec tech academies and now you're teaching some classes and, um, you've really dived, dived into it. If people don't already, they should follow you on Instagram at, Texas Brew and Barbecue. That's T X B R E W. Spell out and A N D and spell out barbecue. B A R B E C U E. And um, you do you you primarily use Rectex, right? When you when you're cooking. Yeah, I've been I've been using Rectex for probably I think we're in our fourth year now, and that's that's what I use. So I started doing these barbecue classes, um, here in the backyard. And they, I wanted it to be a party. When people come over, we're going to cook some food. Um, we're going to drink a lot of beer and 
for those who want to stay and hang out, stay and hang out. And we're just gonna make a day out of it. And that's usually how, you know, these classes go. So we'll have 30 people in the backyard and do these classes and then 15, 20 stay and just hang out and we continue cooking and eating. And it's just, a, it's a really good time. Um, so we, you know, we, we did classes here. I started doing classes at Troy Aikman's restaurant at Texas live. Yep. Um, we're, we're actually scheduling some more classes there. Um, and we taught with, uh, you know, another pit master from Lockhart smokehouse. So, you know, they kind of partnered up with me doing it there and we just kept, just kept doing classes. I went on tour with uh, Aikman's beer, tailgating to college games and the, the, the Cowboys. And we cooked and fed, gosh, a total of probably 4,000 people through that whole tailgating tour. And just slinging pork, uh, pulled pork tacos and sandwiches and brisket and everything else. So it's, a, it's been a really, really fun ride. And I really enjoy doing this. It, wait, wait, so in, is Lockhart where you're based out of? No, I'm in, I'm south of Dallas. I'm uh, 40 minutes south of Dallas. Okay. Lockhart Smokehouse is, um, they're based out of, they came out of Lockhart, Texas, yeah. the whole family feud thing, you know? So they have a couple locations here in Dallas. Well, I got to tell you, man, you mentioned you're, you're green or you haven't been in this game for, you know, long compared to, you know, a lot of guys that were, friends with and that are teaching classes and whatever. But I think actually that's something that's um, an advantage when you're trying to share your knowledge and, and uh, just, you know, I, I'm always very careful to not claim that I'm an expert, even though other people try to say like, Dave's got the best barbecue and blah, blah. I'm like, look, man, I know people who yeah. are elite. Like I would never, I know people who have dedicated right. their lives to this. I'm a backyard dude. Who's just more passionate about, barbecue in the barbecue community compared to most people on i'm the greatest enthusiast you'll ever find but i will not call myself an expert even though i've picked up some shit along the way right and sometimes right. i think that's what makes you uh even better teacher is because i notice a lot of people message me and ask me for barbecue tips and it's probably because guys who truly are experts the myron mixins of the world the big mo caissons whatever people are probably too yeah. intimidated to ask those dudes a lot of times you know uh, exactly and, and, and it's like michael jordan like Michael Jordan isn't a good coach because he's like, just go do it. Like, it's just that at some point it comes so second nature because they've done it their whole life, right? Guys like you and me were right. like, oh, no, we remember what it was like to not even know where we where to start, you know? So it makes it a little easier to, uh, to, to I think, teach and to, um, to relate with people who are uh, backyard warriors and just kind of getting started. Um, I... Uh, I, and I always try to, I tell everyone, I'm like, well, this is what works for me. And, you know, hey, watch, watch right. a YouTube on this, you know, like I, I try to, I don't just say like my way is the way to do it because I know my way is not the only way to do anything, you know? Exactly. And that's, you know, before I even started getting into the backyard, I would, I would burn water. Like I couldn't cook to save my life. <laughs> I thought you and meant that literally. I, I, I got like, huh? it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was literally, I got on YouTube and was like, I want to teach myself how to, how to make barbecue. And I had, you know, I have friends that are, you know, really big in barbecue. I didn't even know barbecue was that big of a thing until like 2000, like 2016. Yeah. And that's whenever I met one of the biggest names in barbecue doing video production. And whenever I met him, they were telling me, they were like, oh, my God, he's got all these barbecue rubs. I was like, I don't know who this guy is. What? <laughs> barbecue? You mean Dickies? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't know what the world was. Um, and then he started teaching me and giving me tips and how to do it and how to and I wanted to make a brisket. And that was like the first thing I tried, which was really stupid of me because brisket, I mean, you got to like really work at it. But I tried that for the first time and then just kept snowballing from there. And just kept learning and watching YouTube videos and doing this. And just, you know, to your point, not claiming to be an expert. I don't like when people say, oh, he's a pit master or he's a chef. Like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like, I didn't get a degree. I'm not slaving over, a you know, a fire and throwing logs on it. I don't do any of that. But I've learned how to make some really good food for the backyard. And 99% of my audience are people who have never made a brisket or they've never made a pork shoulder. They've, they can't even cook a steak. I get more requests about 
what's the best way to cook a steak than anything? And it's crazy to me. And I'm like, okay, this is cool because this is my audience. These are the people I want to talk to. I don't want to talk to the competition guys because that's not my audience. They're, they know way more than I do. But talking to the guys who have never done something and then they go buy a rec tech and they're like, okay, I bought a 590 or a 1070. Like, what do I do? Yeah. And just coach them through their very first cook. And that's what I enjoy doing. Yeah, totally, man. Um, I get that a lot too, man, about steak, how to cook a steak. And I'm like, are you, are you for real? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, like, I'm like, but I got to remember like, Hey man, some people have never had that life experience to go out and, and know which steak is, you know, worth spending more money on or whatever. And, and really truly how to, how to get it right. You know? And, um, yeah, the, uh, the, um, the other question I would get all the time is, uh, what kind of rub did you put on that? What kind of rub on that? You could see that like people are looking for a secret ingredient that's going to unlock everything. Yeah. And I would just tell them over and over again, I go salt and pepper and some other shit. I felt like I was in the mood for, I just threw it together. Right. And, uh, they're like, where can I buy it? And I go, no, no salt and pepper. Like just at your grocery store, like salt and pepper. You already <laughs> have it in your house. I'm just sure. Salt and pepper. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, but where's, and then I just end up with like sending them a link to like meat church or something just to like, be like, here, I'll make it easy for you. So then I'm like, dude, I should do yeah. my own rub. Cause people just want to click buy. They just want you to, they just want to open the thing and go goop. Right. So I finally they, made they my own rub the easy, for that they want reason. The easy way out. Yeah. And you, you have your own rub I mean, too, I right? You've sent the easy me, way out. Yeah. You've sent me, you have the booyah rub and you have some of your own rubs, right? You sent me some. I made, I made three rubs. I got the backyard booyah, which is your basic salt, pepper, garlic, um, you know, your basic meat rub. I made a, uh, a hot rub that I use on chicken or, I mean, you can use it on really whatever, but it's a screaming yard bird. So it's sriracha and cayenne and, you know, all the good flavors that you get out of that. And then I made what is I, I call smoking pig skin, which is the only one that I have any kind of sugar in. And that's the one that I use for ribs and pork and things like that. Um, I use all three of them on, on everything, but I just kind of branded them that way. And now we got three of those out. I'm working on a fourth one right now that I should have probably here in the next 60 days. Uh, I've been working on that over the, you know, the winter and all that good stuff. So um, I, I'm enjoying putting product out and, you know, just building a community of, you know, people that are just wanting to go outside and cook, just like you're saying, they're looking for an easy way out. I actually had a moment just like that. Uh, Alex Blue, the guy who won Hell's Kitchen, um, he made this salmon sandwich and he made this spread. I got, I got into like sauces all of a sudden. I'm like, Oh, I just want to make sauces. So he made this oh, sauce man. with a sandwich and I messaged him. I was like, Hey, what's that sauce? You didn't, you know, you didn't specify. And he was like, mayo, this and salt and pepper. And I was like, that's it. Like there was no like grand, there's no grand thing there. He's like, that's it. But it looks so good. So got to make a sauce. Yeah. And people are pretty willing to share information these days too, man. Like if you hit someone up like that, there's not many people holding their cards, you know, like most people are like, yeah, I'll tell you, you should, you should have great shit yeah. too. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the thing is like, I don't, I don't, if people ask me anything, I'm like, dude, I'm an open book. What do you want to know? Yeah. Like I know what I was taught. So I will be happy to pass it on. Well, since we're already on the subject, man, tell people where they can get your rubs from. Um, you can get the rubs on my website, txbrewandbarbecue.com. Um, the link in, is the links in the bio on Instagram or um, any of the social medias, actually. But you can get it on the website. Um, that's really it, man. They're, they're really good rubs. I've got nothing but good reviews, and I send them out to people. And, you know, I've had, I think I've touched every state so far with shipping these things out. And people are just like, oh, this is this is great. I use it on everything. So, and, you know, that's, that's been a lot of fun to do. So without doing too nerdy of a deep dive, uh, on the rub game here, but I'm always curious cause I'm still trying to like streamline and figure it out. Do you just fulfill your orders yourself? Do you just uh, pop them in an envelope and send them out? Or do you have someone who fulfills for you? I do everything myself. I was actually making calls this morning because we had orders coming in while I was in the hospital and yeah. obviously they didn't fulfill any orders. So I was calling people this morning and saying, Hey, you know, I'm sorry I was out. And I was like personally calling their cell phone numbers and saying, I'm, I'm sorry I was out. I'm going to throw you something extra special in there. I'm sorry it's getting to you late. And they're like, oh my God, don't worry about it. But, you know, I just wanted to do that because I had, you know, I had like 20 people I called this morning and I still have to call more tomorrow. But 
just basically, I just like that personal touch, man. You know, barbecue is a community, you know, how you and I met is just people getting together, having a good time cooking and, you know, just BSing. And that's, that's what I like about this community the most is everyone's just cool. Yeah. Until they're oh. not. <laughs> you're a better, you're a better man than I, man, because I get orders and I'm on the road and like two weeks later, I'll get like an email like, Hey man, no big deal, but just curious when that order is going to come. Cause I'm going to give it to my dad for his birthday or whatever. And I'm just like, Oh bro, I'm on the road for another four days. Like, and then I'm going to sleep for two days Sorry. when I come home and then I'm going to mail it out. And they're like, okay, no problem. No problem. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> but I'm doing the same thing, man. I'm just stuffing envelopes and I, I like it because I get to see, I recognize a lot of the names from people who follow me on social media, whatever. Or yeah. people I've met when they come out to shows and stuff. So, you know, then I'll write a little hand note and just be like, hey, man, can't wait to see you next time I'm through Pennsylvania or whatever and uh, send it off. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I've i got to figure out a way. And I think I have some some answers uh, apart just from putting it on Amazon. But um, I think I have a fulfillment answer that's going to streamline a little bit because I'm so nervous that something's going to go viral or, or whatever. And then I'm going to get like 3000 orders, which is a great problem to have. But then I'm going to tell my kids, right. like, you're not going to school for the next three days. We're stuffing envelopes, you know. So I just I want to <laughs> get all, ahead of it. Daddy's got work for you. <laughs> yeah, I want to spend time promoting so that does happen instead of worried about how I'm going to shove a bunch of bottles into uh, envelopes. So I, I think I've got it figured out, but I'm always curious to find out. Um, you know, what other people are doing with that. Do you have your stuff up on Amazon too? You know, I haven't put it on Amazon. Everything's just been social media and website driven. And people, they always ask me, is it on Amazon? I'm like, no, I haven't got to it. It's like, I, I'm pushing it, but I'm not, it's not my main thing. I'm, I'm putting it out there. Um, but I enjoy just making content for people. I mean, that's yeah. the main thing and that everyone is asking for is like, I want to make content. I want to do some, you know, some different stuff. I mean, you'll get through, you know, May is barbecue month. So everyone's like posting the same content. And I'm like, I want to do something completely different yeah. and throw something out, throw a, you know, a curveball out there. Well, um, I saw you just did a, yeah, a, I need, a, 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 you did a, a series with sandwiches that was pretty, uh, looked pretty damn good. <laughs> Man, those were really good. Me and a buddy of mine were talking about stuff. He's like, you just need to do sandwiches. I was like, oh, that's stupid. And then <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> And it turned out really good. So I've got, I think I'm doing two more out of that series and then I'm going to move on to something else. But I think I'm going to break everything. People really enjoyed that. And I got a lot of feedback off of it. So I think I'm going to break things up in series and be like, here we go. Let's do it this way. All right. Well, let's let's make people's mouths water and also drive them to your Instagram by talking about what is your favorite video that you've done a recipe for and um and, and walk us through it so that they can uh go watch it and then and then want to cook it themselves my favorite cook is hands down a dino rib i love dino ribs and i do a simple i use my booyah rub now but before i had that i would do simple salt and pepper and i would put them on there and just let them go and just yep. i would treat it like a brisket and smoke it till they're you know, then smoke it till you get the, the bark you want, wrap it and, or don't wrap it. Just depends on what you want to do. I usually wrap mine and then I let them hit 203, 204 and pull them off, let them rest. And then just hold that bone and just dive into it. That is my favorite protein to cook. Dude, and I'm they look, they look great. They're definitely a headliner when you pull them out and put them on the table and you have people over. Uh, definitely one of my favorite things to cook as well. I feel like uh, they're the easiest thing to cook too. The hard part is buying them. You got to find the, and now Costco Business Center is selling them, but normally you got to find somewhere that actually sells them plated like that and not chopped up into like short yeah. ribs. Um, and then I don't even have the time to wrap mine. I just, put the s simple salt and pepper on there. Like you don't have to trim them or do nothing, throw them in bone down, let them go real low and slow until you get to about 200 degrees. And then we were talking earlier about people who were experts, maybe uh, not, you know, being as good of teachers. And it makes me think about when I would watch a ton of Aaron Franklin's videos and he was really great yeah. at producing awesome videos to learn from. But the one thing that made it hard was, he'd every now and then just like grab a tongs and shake something or, and be like, ah, that's about ready. And I'm like, well, I don't know 
uh, like I'm not good I enough know to what know that is. what you mean by that. But he's so good, he, like, he knows. Like, oh yeah, he could tell by just feel, right? And that that's the part you can't teach. That just comes from practice over a very long period of time. And beef ribs are the one thing, the first thing where I started getting that, where people are like. You know, some people would tell Myron Mixon would tell you to go all the way up to 210 degrees on them. Other people will tell you pull it 200, yeah. 203. But the one thing everyone says is slide a probe in. And when it just slides like butter, you know that the beef ribs are ready. And that was the first one where I go, oh, I this is what they're talking about. I go, these are ready right where they're, you know, it doesn't matter what the temperature is like. The, the, the term probe tender, when I first got into this, made zero sense to me. I was like, I have no idea what probe tender means. Until finally, like you said, it went in. I was like, oh, that's probe tender. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. it. That's why a lot of dudes but go on I Tinder. Get, They're trying it. to probe, if you know what I mean. Luis, that was a good joke <laughs> you missed, probing. dude. Come on. Oh, no, I got it. All right. <laughs> like I got that way with brisket where you could pick up a brisket. And, you know, when you got that bend, it's like, okay, this one's good. And then I got to where I wasn't even, you know, probe tendering the briskets. <laughs> See, he's got the spirit. Get on board, Luis. <laughs> See, there it is. Come on, Luis. <laughs> uh, I always like to see which companies uh, uh, support, you know, people and, and um, you know, really, I mean, honestly, the, the, the sponsorships, even if it's just through, you know, sharing our stuff or, or uh, you know, giving us um, discounts or support or whatever, uh, it's always interesting to see who supports who. And I know Rectech's been very supportive of you, as they are me and a ton of people. But I also saw you have a boot company. That that gives you some love. Did I see that right? Lou Casey, Lou Casey boots. Yeah. I, uh, I got to be a part of their ambassador program and we started this actually guy was like last spring and, um, yeah, we've, uh, I, I was not even, a I didn't wear boots. I'm not the cowboy type, even though I'm in Texas, <laughs> you give me a pair of Jordans and a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. I'm good. And then they started, uh, we started doing this boot thing and my wife was on board. She was like, oh yeah, Lou Casey's. I was like, no idea, but I'll try it. <laughs> but I got my first pair of boots uh, from them and man, extremely comfortable, like loved them. Now I don't do the boots every day, but when we go out or we go to dinner or something like that, man, I throw on a, throw on those Lou Casey's. They're, they're nice. I love them a lot. So um, yeah, but totally not a boot guy. <laughs> Well, you're a barbecue boot brand ambassador, so get on board, so, bro. Uh, yeah, I, I got to get on board. I'm in Texas. I got to wear boots. That's it. Are you a Cowboys fan? Yeah, I'm a die hard Cowboy fan. Like every year it's getting harder and harder <laughs> to re-up my season tickets. This year, I told Christy, I was like, do we do it again? And she's like, well, you do what you want to. I was like, damn it. I've got... <laughs> so much money wrapped up into these season tickets that I yeah. can't let them go now or just throw money out the window. But yeah. And every year you're like, this year is going to be different than it isn't. <laughs> this is our year to choke again. Yay. So, go Jerry. So have you gotten to meet, um, have you gotten to meet Troy Aikman through doing your classes at his restaurant? Yeah. Yeah. I met Troy. Um, we've, we, we, when we were on the tailgates together, uh, met him there went and he did a uh, he did a tour when eight beer first came out and he was going around to the different bars and stuff around dallas so i went and kind of hung out with that and did that coolest dude you'll ever meet him and i go back and forth on instagram quite a bit because he'll get on his peloton hey, and i'll get on you, peloton bro. and i'm like I'm gonna you beat rubbing you. elbows with a legendary quarterback of the franchise <laughs> you like and it's all thanks to barbecue and social media <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, and that's the one thing I tell people is like, I would not have met half the people I've met if, it, if I did, wasn't in barbecue. That's how cool the community is. And I yeah. do video production for a living. So I meet people all the time. I'm always in LA. I got a lot of LA clients, but there's, you know, I have LA clients and then there's barbecue people, barbecue celebrities that you meet during in doing things like that. And it's just a lot of fun. Like we... We, we got invited out to cook for um, some people out in California. I haven't gone out there yet to do it, but we're going to do it probably this summer. Um, and yeah, they were like, you cook barbecue? <laughs> and uh, you live in California. 
But it's I, like the the L.A. L.A. folk. Yeah, they were like, "What you like? You cook that?" Yeah, it's like, trust yeah. me. That's why I got into it because I'd go on the road. I'd go to these gigs in Houston and and places like that, and eat this amazing barbecue, Austin, and you know all the famous places. And then I'd come back and I'd eat at my local barbecue place, and I would just get mad. And my wife's like, "How?" It was like you with your your Cowboys tickets. She's like, "How many times are you going to?" Uh, be surprised that they're going to disappoint you. And I'm like, every time I go in, I think like, nah, they'll have it figured out this time. And they never do. And so I was like, finally, I'm going to teach myself. And I went and bought a smoker and just started watching YouTube and reading books and taught myself. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I get it. Now I, LA's, LA's got a pretty good barbecue scene now, but it, it was barren uh, when I first started all this. Yeah, I found a couple spots. I can't remember the names. We found a couple spots when we were there because where I'm got I'm in LA probably five six times a year if not more, and um, I, I'm actually going to go cook for Robert Shapiro, um, <laughs> OJ's attorney. Yeah, yeah. I'm so aware. he's a fam he's a family friend, man. We've been we've been working with his foundation for many years. So when I got into this, um, he he uh, he called me and he's like he goes, "Are you cooking barbecue?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I was like, when do you want me to come cook for you? He's like, uh, whenever you want. So he doesn't eat red meat. So he wants me to come out there and smoke turkey for him. So that's what we're going to go do this summer. We're going to go out there and smoke turkey for Bob. Man, hard to uh, hard to beat a good smoked turkey. I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, well, that we're is on the my tour biggest video. It's smoking a turkey? It's a smoked turkey. Smoke, no, smoked turkey breast. Not the whole turkey. The yeah. smoked turkey breast. And was it a, was it a Thanksgiving that. video? No, that was just a, I was just smoking a turkey breast and threw it on the rec tech, pulled it off, sliced it up. And that is the number one video that I have is that smoked turkey breast. All right. I'm going to have to go check it out. I don't think I've seen that one. Um, and I don't yeah, think I've ever done, one. I don't think I've ever done just turkey breasts. I usually do the whole turkey and doing, I, I'm a white meat guy myself. So just doing the, I mean, I've done turkey legs, I guess. I've just done like a bag of turkey legs, but I've never done just the turkey breast. And that sounds like probably a less stressful cook than doing a whole turkey. <laughs> it's, it's a lot less stressful. You don't have to worry about getting the skin perfect or anything like that. But yeah. man, a smoked turkey breast is it's the way to go. Slice it up, make some sandwiches out of it. I think I'm going to do it again and make it part of the sandwich series and put a twist on it. There, oh, that's a good idea, man. Chop it up, make a nice little, oh, yeah, I like that. Uh, well, walk I, may, me, I may have to do that. Walk me through one of your classes now. Walk me through one of your classes. If, uh, if I'm a dude who's just got a big green egg in my backyard or a rec tech in my backyard, and I want to get better at barbecue, and I sign up for your class and go there, and you say you make it a party and whatever, walk walk me through what my day – is it a one-day thing usually? Yeah, it's, it's a one-day thing. Um, usually – if we're doing it at the house, you're going to be greeted with probably some dirty girl product. Um, Rec Tech sends a ton of uh, the the vodka Ritas, the Bloody Marys out. So we usually start off with something like that. Cause I, use, I like to start in the morning, especially if it's a big protein day. Um, and we'll, you know, pre-cook the big meats and then we'll all get in there and get hands on with it. But we usually start with a cocktail or four and then we go to, I'll show them a finished product. We'll start passing out, start getting some food in the in the belly. And then I have everyone hands on if they don't have a brisket or if we're doing steaks or something, they're seasoning their own stuff. They're cooking it. They're getting their hands on a rec tech. And that's one of the biggest things about rec tech is, you know, that's direct to consumer. So people can't get their hands on them. And a lot of people like to come out here because they I've got probably almost every model in my backyard. So they, it's almost like a showroom. So they come out here, put their hands on it, they cook on it, and then we'll cook all day. Um, I'll answer questions. We'll do the, you know, the whole demonstration of whatever it is. If we're doing brisket, we'll go through the trim, the seasoning, how to pick it out. Um, if we're doing pulled pork, same thing. And then we'll just end up having drinks and just cook, eat, and have a good time. And everyone, you know, I've had people drive all the way from New Orleans out here just to go to the class. So it's been, it's been fun. Nice. And then uh, people can crash on your couch if they need to, right? If they need to crash on the couch, they can, but there's, <laughs> it's up to them. <laughs> if it's that, if we're having that good of a time, they can crash on the couch. <laughs> um, yeah. I've thought about doing something where, uh, 
Because I, I did that whole tour during the pandemic, or right on the tail end of the pandemic, when places were starting to open up. And I went and I did two months of comedy in barbecue restaurants. And uh, so we, yeah. would, we would eat the... The, the restaurant's food, obviously, and then I do an hour of comedy, and then we do a, a pitmaster Q&A with me and, like, the, the pitmaster there, the owner there, whatever. So I've been thinking about maybe doing a, a, a different version of that where I go and I tour, same thing with the trailer, but I do it at people's houses. And then we'll do, like, a like a class. Like, we'll throw a barbecue, basically, and I can we could trim a brisket and, and eat barbecue, whatever, and then I could do a show in their yard uh, afterwards. Like, I'm thinking about doing something like that and then just cutting the cutting the venues out completely basically <laughs> man i'm telling you that's that's the thing people enjoyed and this is no knock on going to troy's place or anything like that i had people say i like going to the backyard better than having to go to an establishment because i feel like when people get here you know we're we're more relaxed and passing out drinks and we, we don't have the rules we have to go by you know what i mean so yeah. it's it's a good time and they're more relaxed and everyone's here and, you know, we'll set up tables. We'll do the classroom style stuff. And then, like I said, like beers in hand, let's cook some food, let's eat, answer some questions. And I get a lot of people here. The majority of the class are people who have never cooked a brisket or have never pulled, you know, did pulled pork before or anything like that. So, you know, that's, they're the ones writing it, you know, writing down, asking questions and all that good stuff. So um, you're going to have to come out. We're going to have to make a party out of it. We'll just do a whole Dave weekend, man. I'm in, man. Let's do it. Let's do uh we'll do, we'll do a, a little tutorial. We'll do a little, uh, just, you know, party pre part, like, you know, eating the barbecue and then we'll do a, a, a show. I, I, in Dallas, dude, I got some buddies there too, that we can bring in to do some sets also. So I, I think this could happen, man. Uh, you know, a couple, you know, thousand, we're, we're couple actually, thousand dollars ahead. I mean, we'll give them a good deal. It, easy, <laughs> easy 2000 ahead. Yeah. Some of these barbecue classes are expensive as hell, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's no like, joke. Geez. Man. <laughs> hell yeah. Tom. We're actually thinking about, I'll get with you offline about this, but we're thinking about doing a, uh, we're going to open the pool for the summer. We usually do that once a year and we'll have a bunch of people over and have a good time and everybody goes swimming and I cook something. But I, I think I'm going to do a whole hog. I got the BFG back there that I've been itching to put a whole hog on. Yeah, so. I know. I, I want to try one, that too, That might be man. the time to do it. Yeah, I want to try one, too. I've never done one. Uh, when, when I was a kid, that was one of the first things that really interested me in learning more about uh, cooking uh, this way as well as uh, I grew up in Miami, and they would have the La Caja Chinas, and uh, my, my uh, Cuban friends, their families would do it every um, Christmas. They do it for Christmas Eve. Uh, Buena Noche, I think they call it. And, um, yeah. it, you know, nothing beats a whole hog coming out of one of those boxes and just the skin's all crispy and delicious. Um, and I think I could do one. My offset's big enough. I could do one in there now. Um, or I could just build a pit in my front yard using, like, cinder blocks or something. But, uh, yeah. If you you want got the big offset now. Yeah. Yeah. I got a really big I offset that, now man. from SG Metalworks. That's nice. Um, and I was on the road, so I bought it. And then I was immediately on the road so much that I, I tooled around with it a little bit here and there, but I never got, you know, you got to start cooking every day. And when you really start tuning into something and feeling comfortable with it. And so now that I've yeah. been home in April, I've, I've been firing it up and having a blast with it, dude. It, it's so good. Unfortunately now wood is more expensive than ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go wood, to, wood and eggs. Yeah. They're the most expensive thing. Yeah. I'm going to have to start Bitcoin. I'm going to start chopping down trees in my neighborhood before long. <laughs> I figure out which which trees are good Seriously, to cook Dave with. Dave walking down the street with like a big old tree, like just dragging it. Just, rear, rear, rear. <laughs> like no, Parks and Rec told me I got to get this tree out of here for the community. <laughs> Don't mind me, folks. Do you want to be fined? I have to cut this down, or you're going to get a <laughs> fine from the city. <laughs> well, now that you uh, now that you're uh, on the mend, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna meet me in uh, at Memphis May. We're gonna party there. Uh, what else do you have coming up, yeah. man? What else do you have coming up down the road here? Man, uh, I know that we're, we're kicking off some classes that, you know, I pushed it back a couple months, just I had so much stuff going on. So I know we're going to be kicking off some classes, coming out with another rub, and I'm going to be doing more content than I've ever done just for social media. Um, I mean, they keep asking for it. People keep asking for more content and um, okay, let me, let me make some more content. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to, Keep banging it out, man. Nice. Well, before I let you go, Ty, I know you are a great pit master. You are a great teacher. 
Uh, but in that spirit of teaching and being real with people, leave us with your biggest barbecue fail you can think of. The biggest barbecue fail? Yeah. Not I mean, going outside and not going outside and trying. That's the biggest fail you can do in barbecue. Someone's getting philosophical here. <laughs> Get outside and cook. I think that was my biggest failure was I never tried to do anything and you you got to get out there. That's just, that's all there is to it. It's not that hard. Just get out there and do it. I a hundred percent agree, man. I tell people all the time, they say they're scared to do brisket. I'm like, just go get a brisket and do it. It's and if you bucks, screw up, you maybe. learn. And you know what? <laughs> it's really hard to screw it up to the point that you're going to waste it. Cause you could always chop it up and put it in a chili or in your eggs or something. But uh, with that said, I was looking more along the lines of like a time you almost burnt your house down or something like that. <laughs> but, um, but I do like the answer. I do like the answer a lot. <laughs> if if we want to go with fail, fail, she's going to get mad at me for saying this. Christy and I, we, uh, we had some people over and we were outside consuming some adult beverages and we decided to have a brisket competition between the two of us. Hey. Granted, we're already... We're already a few in, and it was like, it was totally not the time to start this. This is so you we and your wife. In this like comp, me and my wife, we're right. like in this competition with each other. And I mean, we're talking hours, like all day. We were day drinking in, in the pool and decided to, to do this. So all day long from probably 10 a.m. until way late that night. But we both, we both pulled them off like super early. Everyone was just... We weren't in the right sober space to go, mm, that's good brisket. <laughs> These things had to still be raw. By the time we, we put it on the table, we had like people over. We were like, so what do you think of this? Is it this good? <laughs> and it was like bin test. It was just like laying straight across. <laughs> they were like, you're both losers. <laughs> they were like, you both suck. Stop what you're doing right now. Yeah. yeah. That was probably, that was pretty, like, I woke up the next day. I was like, what was that? <laughs> it was See, dumb. You let competition get the best of you, and it ended up uh, yeah. cl classic tortoise in the hair story. Only uh, you were both the exactly. hair. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but that was probably it. But I'm going to stick with my first answer. Get your butt outside and cook some food. Well, my wife is a very good cook, but I would smoke her in a brisket competition. Just saying that out loud. <laughs> oh yeah, we've we've established that like big time. <laughs> but she does desserts, man. She will go outside and cook a killer dessert See, on the Rectech. That's what you need. She does cheesecakes and everything else. Yeah, she does the complete opposite of what I do. So, so you know, I that's what I booked the commercial during the uh, pandemic uh, where they were going to start doing uh, auditions at home, right? It was when that first started. So I get this audition. I'm like, we're going to do an audition during the pandemic. This is when like everything was shut down. It was for Philadelphia cream cheese. And they wanted people to uh, different, you know, characters and whatever to shoot a, uh, or to cook their first cheesecake uh, at home during the pandemic. Right. And so I shot the audition in my front yard in front of my smoker hut that I had just built with my uh, then like 10 year old son. And uh, I was like, hey, I could cook a cheesecake in my smoker and da da da. And I didn't even know if I could. I just figured if you can do it in your oven, you can do it in there. <laughs> and so then they, I got a call back and they go, you can really do that? I go, yeah, no problem. And I booked it. And I'm like, oh, I better figure out how to do this in the smoker. <laughs> and so they ended up hiring my neighbor to run production for me because he was already in my bubble. We, would do, we were doing barbecue content every day. And then they hired my kids yeah. to be extras in it. So I was like, yo, just because I cooked, the, I, I, I built this cool barbecue stand, four people on my street got a paycheck this week. So it worked out. <laughs> I'll, I'll send That's you a link it, to that, man. Yeah, it's, it's up yeah, on I YouTube. I want to see that. Yeah, it's got a couple million yeah. hits, man. It, it was really fun. So, well, yeah, I definitely, I definitely want to see that. Awesome, man. Well, Ty, thank you so much for joining me, dude. Uh, I hope everyone goes out and follows you at TX brew and barbecue uh make sure that you order his rubs go to the website and um if you're anywhere in the uh texas area or are able to travel there uh go take one of his classes man and we'll definitely get together let's do some collabs man because i think we can do some really fun stuff yeah man we got to get you out of here we'll we'll let's open up the backyard in the pool and do a hog that'll be a, i think it'll be a blast and we'll make a lot of content 
I, I think we should have a board meeting about this at Memphis in May next week. And uh, that way we could write the trip off on our taxes and we're going to make it happen, buddy. Exactly. Hell yeah. Thanks for having me, Dave. All right, man. I'm glad you're feeling better and that your insides aren't exploding anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I, you know what I didn't mention? I had a tube coming out of my gut. Oh, okay. Before That's or after I the surgery? <laughs> After the surgery, okay. not before it was, it was after it. And that when I woke up and uh, you can splice this in wherever I woke up. And the first thing that I was doing, I was like, what is, what is this? <laughs> like I had this like tail, <laughs> like, what's going on? And so, the, the, the doctor said, yeah, the infection's so bad. We got to suck it out of there. And I was, I looked at my wife. I was like, suck it out. <laughs> <laughs> like, we didn't get this out whenever they opened me. That's yeah, where the, that that's was, where they uh, hook the barbecue sauce up to, and you just walk around like this. I know. I was like, "Can you bottle this? And put it in the fridge. This <laughs> would right. be so good." We're leaving all that in, man. <laughs> all right, Ty. I'll see no, you, buddy. You Thanks, man. All right, man. Yeah. <laughs>